Okay, what is going on everyone, and welcome back to the channel. It is your host, TKK here, and we're back with another set of tournament replay analyses. So it's been quite a while, been about a month. It's the first time in a long time that I've had some free time on a Sunday evening to record. So here I am. And yeah, so the last video that I uploaded and recorded was um, week one of the Portuguese Premier League. So here we are continuing that. We're now doing week two, and hopefully I can find some more time throughout this week um, to kind of record weeks three through, I believe, six is what we just finished. So yeah. Uh, yeah, but not much really else to say. You guys kind of know the deal. Three uh, OUs, SSOU, UU, RU, NU, Little Cup, Ubers, Doubles, and then SMOU and uh, or SOU. So these videos tend to be long just because there's a lot of games. So let's not uh, really dawdle here and get right into it. Before we do, if you could leave a like, comment, subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. But uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoy this one. So game number one, we have uh, Gacha or Bleach facing off against great so SSOU uh, obviously um, not my main tier or anything but uh, a lot of interesting mons here I do see the Rillaboom which uh, is intriguing I really also like our Weavile um, in particular I think that obviously Blaziken is something that can you know come in and resist both of our stabs but it's not very strong or sorry it's not very defensively sound so it is not going to appreciate stuff like knock and icicle crash etc Melmetal obviously another Pokemon that can come in um, but it is not going to want its leftovers knocked off and same goes for Slowbro so the opponent's going to have to predict well around uh, Weavile uh, in particular I think Urshifu um, is not going to be the greatest here, um, but with future site support, maybe we can make something happen. Um, but yeah, I don't think there's really much else to say. I think we kind of just get into the game here, obviously. Um, not super familiar with everything. So let's see, we see the Torn lead versus Weavile lead. So yeah, leading off with Weavile right off the bat. Obviously, um, can force some pressure early in the game here. Obviously, outspeeds the Torn, um, unless it's adamant for some reason. So the opponent is going to go into Blaziken early, and we are going to get that knockoff right off the bat, which does remove the leftovers. So that's really good. That means any damage that sticks on Blaziken is permanent. That means its Flare Blitzes are going to... Um, really chip away at it uh, over the course of this game and obviously Blaziken isn't a huge threat as long as we have Tox specs around so uh, and even Landorus so we're, we're in a good spot all together so we're gonna see a good double here from the opponent anticipating the Pex um, or maybe even the slow over in the Landorus and uh, we'll bring, be able to bring the Slowbro out uh, we're gonna take this as an opportunity to Toxic early which I really like the Slowbro could be really really annoying for like we mentioned uh, Weavile or Ushifu so getting a Toxic off on it early is really good yes we have to deal with the future site now but with good positioning we should be okay as we can pivot into Landorus T now anticipating the opponent to want to teleport this is gonna bring in their own Torn and we're gonna be, able to, we're gonna be kind of be forced to take the knock um, but that's fine because we can slow U-turn into Weavile so this is what, why this was such a good play and let's talk about this really quickly so Going into Lando here, anticipating the T-Port was really, really good because the opponent can really only go into a few things uh, versus Lando, uh, one of them being Torn. So now this allows us to get that, that slow U-turn off and then bring our Weavile or whatever back in to absorb the future set that was in the air. Um, while, yes, we do lose leftovers on Landers, it could have been a lot worse. So this is some really... Oh, excuse me. Excuse me, the music switched up. I forgot I put it on uh, infinite repeat. Anyway, so this allows us to bring the Weavile back in, which we already mentioned was a big threat, and really limit the damage that we were going to take uh, from this thing. So we're going to get another knockoff already. Knockoff off Blaziken's at 50%. Toxapex can come in. And yes, we see some more, you know, pivoting, blah, 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 blah. Uh, good doubles from the opponent, but we're not really too pressed because we can go into Sloking of our own, go for our own future site. And yes, they have their future site in the air, but we also have. Um, some options here so we're gonna see a thunder punch into a jack button really nice use of the jack button here to again dodge the future side that's in the air go into core absorb it and put ourselves in a fairly decent position here so we're gonna go for a roost here see what the opponent wants to go for uh, they end up going for double iron bash and they end up taking quite a bit of damage with rocky helmet so that works out pretty well for us they also waste one of those uh double iron bash or Two of those double iron bash, BP, iron bash PP because of pressure, so that's really good to see. And they take the future sight, so they end up being around 50% after that sequence. So we're going to see protect here from the opponent as we end up just going for a roost. Good play on their end, getting some leftovers back. We are able to also get roosted up, so which is great. They're going to go to Slowbro here. We're going to anticipate that, go for a U-turn. We are going to get chipped away a little bit with Rocky Helmet, but we can go back into Slowbro Galar, or sorry, Sloking Galar, and kind of rinse and repeat. So future sight's going to go right back up in the air. Corviknight can come right back in. Opponent's going to go for an Earthquake. Um, 
they don't get that turn right and again we're in a good spot we're gonna go for a body press here as the opponent's gonna go into torn that's gonna take body plus body press plus uh future sight and uh yeah so we're kind of in this rinse and repeat segment here garchomp comes in they're gonna make a double into slowbro anticipating maybe corviknight orlando uh they are able to get that turn right i suppose but we can just go back into slow king uh, as they go for a scald which barely does anything and with regen we'll be able to just kind of uh just you know heal that right off and their slow row is getting lower and lower as you do get a really really nicely timed crit there uh knocking out that slow bro that that was pretty pretty awesome for us because we were able to get that we were able to get that uh kill and we also still have the future set in the air which is going to hit anything pretty hard here so we're obviously in a pretty excellent spot so Corviknight's going to come right back in. Even with Thunder Punch um, plus Future Sight, it won't be enough um, to knock us out. And they are going to be forced to take Future Sight as well, which gets them pretty low. And we obviously have the option to Roost, and we are faster, so... We're in a fine spot overall. The opponent is going to make a nice prediction here. Go for the superpower, make that reveal. But unfortunately, it's just going to be just a tad too little. And we can continue to roost and put ourselves in a good spot. The opponent kind of has to hope for a crit here. Um, they can just continue to try to keep us low. Um, but fortunately, they're just out of range of getting killed to Rocky Helmet. So we get a little bit more health. Um, as superpower is going to dwindle in power over the course of this exchange. So down it goes. Corviknight ends around uh, 50%. Blaziken comes in. As you can see, at this point, the game feels really, really over. Uh, even Blaziken at like plus two, as you can see here, really can't do anything to Toxpex. 41% is really, really, really pitiful as we are able to get a Toxic off, and that's going to put that thing on a timer. And the only real big threat left is the Rillaboom, which could be concerning. Um... But with Corviknight relatively healthy, Intimidate still around, and of course Toxic Pex being able to Toxic, we should be okay. So, Orshifu is going to come in on the Flare Blitz there. Good good play there. Um, just uh, getting the regen on the Pex, and that's going to enable us to U-turn on the Rillaboom, get some decent damage on that thing, Intimidate it with the Landorus, as they do end up going for that uh, Swords Dance, and uh, put ourselves in a position to maybe uh, just kind of clean up here. So. We're going to go for another U-turn, uh, bring in our Pex, which is now at full after Terrain, and uh, that is going to enable us to um, just kind of throw off another Toxic. So Toxic is going to go off on Torn. Now this thing's on a timer, and this is going to be pretty much just a dismantulation. There, I don't know if that's the term, but <laughs> uh, we dismantle this team one by one. We're going to go for a knock here, uh, remove this thing's lefties, and at this point they're really going to struggle with Toxic Pex, especially in Terrain. They can't even EQ it and do that much damage, so gonna keep going back and forth again a toxic on chomp now the opponent really has to hope and pray that really boom can somehow uh get something make something happen but unfortunately for them it's just looking very very unlikely and we can kind of skip through the rest here because it's not that interesting we're gonna go for future sight here making prediction understanding the opponent's gonna try to play aggressive um but at this point it doesn't really matter as we can go for sludge bomb uh the opponent's gonna go for u-turn guard chomp is gonna come in as we end up going for another sludge they're gonna get hit with a future sight which brings them relatively low Rillaboom comes right back in. We're going to go into Corv. They're going to go for Swords Dance. We're going to go for another U-Turn. Pex is going to come in. Pex can just hit Toxic, and now they're on a timer. Even at plus four, even at plus what? Plus four Drain Punch is doing absolutely nothing. Into Haze means it's just futile, and the opponent decides to forfeit. So really well played game, honestly. Don't think there's really much else to say. 6-0, like... I think the thing to glean here was like the positioning with the Weavile around Future Sight and just understanding that how much progress we make with Future Sight of our own and how Gotcha was able to use that to his advantage. So it was a pretty well played game, really fun to watch live, um, and I don't think there's really much else to say, so we'll leave it at that. Okay, game number two, we have Kyther facing off against uh, uh, Ruyer? Ruer? I don't know, Ruer? Uh, anyway, so Kyther's team very similar in a lot of the cores here. Weavile, Slowbro, Galar, and uh, or so Slow King Galar, excuse me. I don't know why I keep mixing that up. And then Toxapex. So very very common thing here. We do have the Magnet Zone, which with the Air Balloon and uh, Magnet Rise and Iron Defense and Body Press, we'll be able to trap uh, trap this thing. The uh, Mel metal, sorry. So uh, that can open up our Weavile a lot more. But then again, the opponent does have, you know, Rashifu, which does resist both staffs. So keep, we have to keep that in mind. Obviously, they have a Tapu Lele, which could be a huge threat as well, depending on what it clicks, and a Dragapult with uh, Spec Shadow Ball, which is also very terrifying considering our resist is Weavile, which isn't going to take it very well. Maybe a like one time thing. And then obviously, Pex can take a hit, but does have to be wary of drops and such. So. 
We'll see how Kaito decides to manage his resources around this team. Um, but it should be a good game. So let's get right into it. We're going to see the Torn lead. Again, Torn, generally good lead. And in a lot of these situations, can knock, U turn, uh, can kind of do whatever it really, really needs to do. So Torn versus Lando. Uh, we're going to see the Zap come in on the very first turn to get knocked off, try to fish for that static paralysis. Does not get it, fortunately. And we're going to see Kaito correctly not U turn here to uh, avoid any sort of static chance. So we're going to see Volt switch come in out as guard chomp is going to come in pretty safe honestly i feel like the opponent could have probably predicted that um there's not much zapdos can do to chomp except maybe like specs hurricane but it already was knocked anyway so yeah uh anyways chomp is gonna be able to get its uh rocks up here and we are gonna get a toxic off on the lando which is pretty awesome we unfortunately are gonna get knocked on the same turn but i think that toxic on their bulky ground is much more valuable uh than the knock that we uh received here so we can go into Weavile now as the opponent is going to go for the rocks. Good prediction here from Kaitha, really forcing the issue early um, and forcing the opponent to make a decision on what they want to bring in. So Mel Metal is going to come in here as Kaitha does go for the triple axle, does not, decides not to um, go for the knock here, just playing it safe, which I think is fair um, as the opponent is going to go into Mel Metal. And we're going to pivot into Toxapex here as the opponent is going to go for the double iron bash. Um, which is going to allow us to eject button into the Magna Zone. So that works pretty well. Now we can see Magna Zone do what it does best. So we're going to see an Iron Defense here as the opponent is going to go for that Double Iron Bash, popping the Balloon, then a Magnet Rise to drop or to avoid any sort of Earthquake, and then a second Iron Defense, Body Press, Double Iron Bash, and then a second Body Press. So down goes Melmetal very early in the game. That's really, really good to see. Now that really is going to open up stuff like Weavile even more. We can click Knock. Even our Ice-type moves are going to hit a lot harder because our Shifu um, is one of those Pokemon that doesn't usually run Leftovers or Boots or anything. So um, it will be getting chipped down pretty fast. So that works out pretty well. Dragapult is going to come in to Revenge Kill Us. And we are going to go into Toxapex as we had talked about at Preview. It does take quite a bit though, as you can see, 45%, and now that we see it's locked into that, we're going to see Kyther make a good pivot into Weavile, the kind of the one one or two times he can do this in the game. I guess this is the one out of two times he can do this in the game, so that works out well. As you can see, we're boots not banded, so uh, we are going to go for a knock here, removing the Urshifu's protective pads. Not that that really does too much for us here, although that means we can try to chip it with rough skin later on in the game. Zapdos is going to come in, that knockoff coming in clutch early, it's forced to take 25%, and now Sloking Galar can come in now and fire off Future Sight, as the best Future Sight absorber on the team is kind of gone, and Lele being obviously resist is good, but we, we love to get this thing chipped, like we happily would let this thing take resisted Future Sights and rocks and all that, so we're going to see a Future Sight come out here as the opponent brings in their Lando to scare us out with Earthquake. We're going to go Chomp uh, again to maybe punish the U-turn a little bit. So that's a good play there from Kyther as the opponent is going to go into Lele and to absorb the future side on the next turn. So we're going to go for Protect here. I really like this play here. Or I really like this uh, prep here, I meant. Um, the Protect is really, really clutch. Obviously, it doesn't have as much use now without uh, lefties, but still pretty cool uh, as we are able to scout out what the opponent goes for. They're, they're going to be forced to take a uh, Psychic Train uh Psychic Terrain boosted Future Sight, which I believe is how it works. Um, so they take quite a bit, as you can see there, 36%. Um, but yeah, actually, I just got a really important text, so I'll be back in a second. Okay, I'm back. So yeah, um, yeah. so the Protect there allows us to scout the Moonblast, which works out pretty well. Also, we'll be able to allow us to scout you know, Dragapult in the future as well. So it makes a good double here, as we are um, going to be able to take the uh, Future Sight, or the Shadow Ball with our, um, what do you call it? What am I trying to say? Our uh, Assault Vest, so that works out well. We are forced to take a second Shadow Ball here, as I think Kyther may have... Um, never mind, no. Ignore what I was going to say. Um, I was going to say, oh, maybe you can go Weavile on this, um, and maybe he was just predicting like, an extra prediction from the opponent, but then it's like, you can't really do much... To do too much to Dragapult because um, Ice, uh, Ice Shard doesn't work in Psychic Terrain, etc, etc. Um, so... Uh, and also just like being locked in Ice Shard into like Urshifu or something, it just can be awkward, right? So, um, instead decides to go Torn to pivot as the opponent is going to definitely not want to take this future site that's in the air, uh, knowing this is going to double in its pecs, which works out well, as Landris is going to come in and unfortunately will not get knocked out um, by the future site, but 
will get punished by rough skin to the point that it dies here. So we're able to just um, force the opponent to lose uh, his sack there. And now it's going to come down to how well we decide to play around this pull. So it is going to get a little bit dicey, but we are able to use this protect guard chomp really, really well to scout what the opponent wants to go for. We're going to double in the pecs here as this shadow ball ends up doing about 46. Pretty heavy damage as we are going to pivot into Magnezone. I feel like here you could have just gone Magnezone first. Um, knowing that Pex was going to take rocks damage and all that. I think maybe he... I, I, I don't know exactly what Kaitha was thinking. Maybe like predicting something from the opponent to switch. But either way, we're, we're going to sack the Magnezone, which is kind of useless at this point. And put some uh, pressure on with the Weavile. We are unfortunately going to miss first time Triple Axel. So no chip for the Rashifu. As we are going to go into Torn here. As the opponent is going to go for U-Turn. Zapdos comes in, forced to take all that rocky, or sorry, that uh, stealth rock damage, and we can go into Slowbro to help regen some of this health back. As Hurricane only does 21%, we are able to get a future side off, which is great. Second Hurricane connects, but it doesn't get to do enough as Sludge Bomb is going to do about 35. The opponent decides to commit and knock out the Slow Bro. Uh, sorry, so Slow King, but Zapdos is going to take quite a bit in return to the point that it is going to be knocked out here. Fortunately, we dodge Static yet again, which puts us in a pretty great position as we can just go sack Garchomp here to the sh uh, Draco Meteor. Excuse me. As this thing's kind of lost its utility, now we can go into Torn yet again. Basically, just click Knock Off um, or Hurricane um, as we decide to go for Knock and Hurricane and Knock Out the Roshifu. And now our Torn is looking really, really, really good. Dragapult uh, can come in. Obviously, Draco could knock us out from this range. Uh, so, Kyther is going to correctly sack the Toxapex and we'll be able to win this end game as Torn can come in now. Click Knock. Fortunately, no crit here, which is pretty, which is great as crit obviously would have sealed the game. So, down goes the pull. All we need to do now, because we're sure that this uh, Lele is is um scarf we can just sack weavile to the moon blast as down goes the weavile we're gonna go back into torn which can now just go for two knocks in a row remove the scarf and a second knock will be able to win the game so kaithar ends up taking the dub there pretty well played uh i don't think there's really much else to say i think i guess like one turn that was weird was like packs into mag so i guess like sacking the mag would have been better but i think he played it really well was able to use the eject button into magnezone perfectly to trap that um Melmetal, and then from there, Weavile and our own future site was able to put in a lot of work. So, worked out really well. Kaiser played well, picked up a dub, and I don't think there's really much else to say. So, let's get into the next game. Okay, and here we have game number three. We have uh, Clean or Nick, White Ceiling versus TJ uh, on the other side. So, obviously, a pretty great matchup here. Nick, obviously, being a very solid OU player, qualified for o OLT, etc., etc. Uh, TJ, if you don't know him, I don't know where you've been, but obviously really great Pokemon player altogether. So pretty highlight match and obviously Clean has his work cut out for him, but uh, we see a pretty stall-ish team here from TJ, which is interesting. Obviously Gastro, Blissey, Reuniclus, like not really much for me to say here. So we have to hope that Clean has something on the team that can break past all of this and maybe with a little bit of luck, um, he'll be able to get past and uh, win the game. So let's get right into it. So, yeah, we're going to see Torn T lead versus Toxapex lead. Good lead here from Clean, understanding that, you know, Torn, generally good lead from the opponent. To Toxapex can cover most things there. Excuse me. So, we're going to see Heatran come in here uh, um, on the knock. Actually gets the Flame Body Burn early, which is quite nice. Uh, really limiting what the Torn can do, as it is going to go for that U-turn here. And we are going to get our attempt to go for Toxic. So, good play there from TJ uh, covering that. We are able to go for an Earth Power on the f next turn as the opponent goes for the rocks. Good play here from Nick. I really like this. You know, understand that, hey, you know, the opponent's going to maybe just want to go for rocks, blah, 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 blah. And he's going to expect that uh, Nick might just do the same. So, let's take this an opportunity to go for Earth Power, get some big damage off, and then go for rocks on the next turn. So, really good order, good order of operations there, if you will, as Gastro is going to come out, go for the Scald. Um, we're just going to soft boil as the opponent goes for earth power, fish for some of those uh, drops. Earth powers are doing a decent amount, honestly, 25%, as we're going to see Nick begin to calm mind up, seismic toss, and gets T-Way, which is a little unfortunate, as Gastro is going to come in now and be able to clear smog and remove all that. So, not uh, the win that we were going to look at hoping for there, but it's all good, as we are going to see this kind of play out a little bit. TJ is going to fish a little bit for Paras. We are going to try to just get some recovery PP out of this Gastro if we can. As we end up soft boiling there, get fully paralyzed, etc., etc. Another soft boiled. Heatran is going to come in now as uh, the Torn is going to go for another knock. And we are able to go for a. Excuse me. 
we're gonna go for a magma storm on the switch which catches the blissey which is really really great so that means this thing is gonna be a little bit more hard pressed uh, to si or to soft boiled we're able to get a toxic off on this thing plus magma storm as you can see it's chipping it away at it we're gonna go into landorus here as the opponent is gonna go for uh, a soft boiled so that's able to you know bring our tor our lando in and now you know force knock or uh, try to break past this team with um, as you can see I think sword stands here so now clean is kind of in a good position Stone Edge needs to crit, which does have a high crit ratio, um, especially as the opponent has to go for a Iron Defense. Stone Edge again um, does not crit, but we still have a couple more chances. We're going to go for another SD here. Good play here from Clean. Really playing a little bit for the crit here, but if he gets the crit, he kind of wins the game, right? Because what can TJ's team really do to Lando? So we're going to go for another Stone Edge. We get that crit. The opponent is going to iron defense up, and all we have to do is hit another one, which we fortunately do. And now TJ unfortunately is in a lot of trouble. Icy Wind, <laughs> which is a pretty cool tech. Um, I don't think I've seen that too often. Um, maybe I'm just mistaken, but isn't going to do enough. And Lando is just too much of a threat at this point. Heatran can come in. No reason for us to risk anything. We can just go into our own Tran. As the opponent goes for Plume, knocks us out. We go back into Lando, removing that uh, minus one speed. Earthquake, knock it out. Gastro is going to come in. We go into Pax. And at this point, we've broken past the team so well that uh, there's nothing really the opponent can do. We just haze to prevent the Reuniclus from doing anything. Recover, Clefable, Calm Mind up, blah, blah, blah. The rest of the game is honestly pretty straightforward. Uh, eventually, Hydra is going to come in and Dark Pulse. Coldberry does get revealed, and we do dodge a Focus Blast, which kind of just seals the game. There's nothing that... TJ could really do. It was just a game, and honestly, I'll take it. <laughs> you know, um, tough matchup. Stall was going to be so hard to break through, so getting misses, getting crits, doesn't really matter. Uh, that's just the way it is. So we will pause it there and get into the next one. So, yeah, uh, our OU ends up going 3 0, which is awesome. And uh, yeah, I don't think there's really much else to say. So we'll pause it, get into the next game. Okay, and here we have the next game. We have Big Fat Mantis versus Heart Doom in SS. UU. So obviously UU, great tier, really love it. Really like the team that uh, BFM is bringing here with Hippo, Lycanroc, uh, Excadrill. So maybe a little bit of a sand core here between Hippo and Exca. And then obviously Lycanroc is like one of my legitimately favorite Pokemon. I think it is such all forms, except for Midnight. I think I think that thing's kind of ugly, but um, such a cool mon. Always love to see it in, um, in UU because uh, I feel like it is such an underrated threat because of its speed tier it has really solid coverage access to sd it is just a really solid mod so interesting to see what it will be able to do i also like our hydra a lot um dark pulse plus draco kind of goes insane on this team so if bfm is able to use those well then he can win uh, pretty handedly from the opponent's side a couple of things to worry about i would say um their Hydra definitely looks threatening. Our Dark Pulse switch in is literally our own Hydragon, Hy Hydragon, Hydreigon, so we have to be very careful around that thing. Uh, Keldeo and Zydog, I'm not really too stressed about because of Slowbro plus Hippo. Rotom, obviously, is always annoying, especially for a triple water weak team. Um, and then Amoongus could be annoying because it can get a spore off, etc., etc. So. Let's see how BFM decides to uh, manage this because how Hydra is really a big threat, especially if this is Specs, it's going to be very, very hard to handle. So we'll see what he decides to do to kind of manage um, uh, manage that thing. So we're going to see the Rotom Wash lead from the opponent versus Hippo lead. Hippo early, uh, able to get the sand up. Also, maybe get rocks up early, kind of go from there. So we're going to see a Sloking switch on turn one as the opponent decides to go for Hydro and into volts so we know they're not choiced we see their leftovers as sloking is able to get that future side off early uh, which is going to put some pressure on the opponent as they decide to pivot and rotom now we're going to go into lichen rock um as uh we can go for a stone edge here which does do 70 percent the opponent does volt switch correctly and with a little spadaf boost we actually don't take up end up that end up taking that much damage excuse me and we end up getting 70 percent off on rotom which is pretty awesome obviously we knew they were going to volt switch here because they don't want to take stone edge plus you know future sakes that would just knock them out so good play there from uh, mantis um getting that turn right as rachi is going to come in and take that future site so this is going to enable them to get up the rocks as we decide to go into Exca here as they end up going for those rocks. We can spin, we can earthquake, we can really do whatever we want as the opponent's going to go into Moongus as anticipated. They're probably Rocky Helmet, so they're going to chip away at us a little bit, but we do have leftovers to help offset that, even if it is something minor. As Hydra is going to come in, we do end up missing or dodging a stun spore, which is pretty great for us 
as we can double into Slow King now on the Caldeo switch. Really good play there. And now we can apply a little bit more pressure with Teleport as Hydra of our own comes in. So opponents decides not to risk it because they understand that, that we're uh, probably Scarfed and they may be Specs as Drake only does 30% to the Rachi. We're going to go back in Exca. Obviously, this is a good scenario for us. We're getting leftovers. We can spin. Even with the chip from um, Rocky Helmet, we're not losing that much net over the sequence of this. Um, over the sequence, as you can see, we're at 86%. So we're in a fine spot altogether. As we are going to get stun sport here, which doesn't really bother slowing. It's already slow as is. So we're able to get a future side off, and we're going to pivot into our own Hydra, Hydra here. Pretty ballsy turn here. Um, but again, we have to play we have to play like this because of the fact that we don't have a great Dark Pulse switch in. So we can now force this thing out with um, Draco. And I really wanted BFM to just go for Dark Pulse in this turn. But he made the right to play just going for the Draco. As um, uh, Future Set is just going to... We're going to miss Draco and Future Set does absolutely nothing. So we're going to have this play out yet again. Bonus has to start U-turning, which is a smart play to get a little bit more chip as we decide to continue to rapid spin. So that's smart. As we are going to go into Hippo now to try to maybe force a little bit more chip on their Hydra, as you can see. 6% at a time. If it, if it takes this long, we'll do it, right? So Lycan is going to come in here. Even with the <laughs> Spadef boost, Specs Dark Pulse is too strong as uh, they are down to 88%. We can go into Hydra now. As the opponent has to go into Amoongus. Uh, again, good play from the opponent. You know, using understanding that we're probably going to go for U-turn, utilizing that and getting some more Rocky Helmet chip. Um, so yeah, they're playing pretty well. I won't deny that. Um, especially given the fact they have the advantage, they're really taking, uh, really pushing that. So, Fierce Sight's going to go up here again. We don't have a great switch in Colberberry. We have to use up here as we end up fortunately teleporting out of there. If we didn't, if we got flinched there, would have been or Parad, we've been in really a tough spot, but able to work out as we can go into Hydra now, and they are going to correctly sack the Rotom decide not to risk the Rachi or anything as we are able to get our hippo in bring the sand up knock out the Rotom even out the score and kind of force the Keldeo in so we're gonna see another double into Hydra here really good play from the opponent they, they understand the advantage they have and they're they're playing to it so that's, that's a smart play for sure no denying that um, we are gonna be forced to go into Hydra here as we take another Draco fortunately we're able to live the sand afterwards but we only have 9% health, as you can see here, so it is looking a little tough. We're going to make a good prediction. Flamethrower here, catching the Amoongus. Awesome play, as we're going to double into Slow King here um, on the anticipated... I actually don't know what he's anticipating. Maybe Keldeo switch? Uh, that, that's fair. Maybe even Zygarg, Zydog, so... We are going to eat the Dark Pulse here, as we end up getting flinched. That was fair. It was bound to happen. We end up going into Hippo now. Um to uh, eat this Dark Pulse, which does so much damage. We are able to be just out of range, but it is definitely a tricky situation to be in because one flinch and it's all over. So fortunately they are getting chipped slowly but surely by uh, the sand and we are fortunately not getting flinched. If we get flinched, it's it's really, really bad. So um, BFM continues to uh, slack off into getting rocks up smart play there as now we can pivot into slow king and sack that to the dark pole so at this point it's looking dire no no denying that it is looking really really tough as i think what mantis was doing with that sequence was getting rocks up which is really important to help punish the hydra a little bit more especially with the uh, form of removal out of the picture and also preserving the sand so we can set it up later for maybe like an excadrill uh later in the game anyways we're gonna see the u-turn here get quite a bit of damage off on the hydra as they end up going for another dark pulse good plan their end as we're able to knock them out with sand we can go back in our excadrill now get the rapid spin kill which is pretty funny and down it goes so their biggest start is out of the picture but it doesn't mean we're out of the woods yet they still have keldeo uh amoongus uh jirachi and a zydog so we're not in the best spot so Keldeo comes in, we're just going to go for an Iron Head, go for that flinch if we can, which we do end up getting pretty huge, we'll definitely take that, and that is going to enable us to go for an Earthquake on this turn and knock them out, so hey, sometimes that's all you need, sometimes you need a little bit of luck, right, sometimes you need a little bit of luck, so we'll take it, Iron Head and Earthquake knocks them out, they go into Amoongus now, same thing, uh, go for another Earthquake, they end up going for a Stun Sport connecting, not paralyzing us, but we end up going for the Rapid Spin kill here, which does kill them and also get our speed back up to neutral, so. Good play there for Mantis. Zydog comes in, obviously can knock us out very easily with a thousand arrows. We're gonna sack the Exca. As now we can go into Hydra. Hydra can go for a Dark Pulse. No reason to mess around here because we have the Celesteela in the back, which can win the game. So he just needed damage, decides not to risk anything. Um, the Jirachi's gonna come in as we end up going for the Meteor Beam. They have to hope for like some crazy flinches here, which they do start to flinch. 
Um, and it could get a little scary, but all we have to do is atomize once. Once we do that, we can flamethrower, knock them out, flamethrower again, knock them out, and Mantis wins the game. I think there's a little bit of contention with the plays here, um, depending on the turn that he autonomized, if he Meteor Beam versus autonomized uh, on this turn. Uh, I think it didn't matter too much. I can't remember. We had some sort of discussion about it. I can't really recall, but either way, he ends up picking up the win, and that was that. So we ended up playing for the Celesteela win, and he ended up getting it. So really well done. Don't think there's really much else to say, and we'll pause it and get into the next game. Okay, and here we have our RU game. We have um, Theo facing off against Evigaro. So uh, obviously Theo known for bringing uh, fat teams and brings yet another fat one. Um, Evie's team very very well appears to be anti-fat stuff like Golurk, Heracross, Togekiss definitely well prepared for this matchup so to see exactly how uh, Theo decides to handle these threats I definitely think Golurk, Hera and Togekiss are the biggest threats so we'll see exactly what he decides to do so Steelix is gonna be the lead of choice versus Golurk right off the bat uh, we do see the Trick Sticky Barb set. So this is a Klutz set. It uses Klutz plus Trick plus Sticky Barb uh, to, you know, cripple something. Something like Steelix, for example, the Steel. And uh, we were able to get a Toxic off, which is nice, but we are forced to take 12.5% per turn. So definitely not the situation we wanted to be here, find ourselves in. So we're going to go for Weezing here as they end up going for Poulter, which does do about 42%. We were able to get a Strange Steam off, which is quite nice. And now you can see Golurk is very, very low. So they decided to preserve it here. As we are gonna just go into, or we're just gonna double into Umbreon. We're gonna go for a Wish as the opponent is going to go into Reuniclus, and now Dublin can come in and they go into Togekiss. So we're gonna see a lot of the same. Air Slash, Heracross comes in. We end up going for a Toxic here, which could potentially activate Guts, which is really scary. We decide to go Steelix as the opponent goes for a knock, doing about 40%, which I think is fair to assume this thing is Guts. The knock here was actually a good play. Removing the Sticky Barb is really nice, um, but we do are forced you know, to take quite a bit as the opponent makes a really good double knockoff play, anticipating our switch, and our Crobat gets hit very, very hard. So We're going to see the Copper come in on this turn as we end up going for a Roost. Excuse me. We're going to go for the Defog here. I think the opponent goes for the Heavy Slam, which knocks us out. And now they're going to go for Heat Crash, which does 54%. So we're obviously not in the best position. We were able to get a CC off, which does do quite a bit. Um, but we're obviously in a tough spot because of Heat Crash. So we have to go into Milo here. We're going to go for a Skull, knocking out the Copper, which is good. So we're able to even up the score. But you can see our team is already getting so, so weakened. Steelix comes in on a T-Bolt. Golurk's going to come in. We're able to go for another Toxic here. Uh, I would have probably just gone for a Rocks, I think, on this point, as the opponent does make a good play going into Golurk, and now we're in a weird spot yet again, as uh, we are going to trade Rocks. That's fine and all. They're going to go for an Earthquake and knocking out our Steelix. So, kind of 50-50, debating between, you know, Poltergeist and Earthquake, and unfortunately, we kind of get it wrong, and, uh, you know, could have gone, you know, we could have gone Weezing, which is Levitate, um, on, the on the Earthquake, but... That's that. Double down. Uh, four to four. Umbreon versus Togekiss. But again, tough spot to be in, especially with our both of our... Uh, especially with our Steelix down and our Crobat not being able to revenge kill. Now Togekiss is just going to be able to kind of walk all over us. So we're going to see another recover here as the opponent starts to Calm Mind. They're going to go for a Toxic. This is a pretty crazy play, or a pretty crazy set. Calm Mind, Toxic, Reuniclus. So <laughs> it's going to be able to beat stuff like Milotic, which could haze it 1v1. Um, and kind of go from there so pretty insane set as we're gonna see Raikou come in and now this thing's gonna start calm mining as Umbreon can go for foul play which only does 27% and plus one T-Bolt is doing some pretty good damage so uh, Umbreon is gonna be gonna go for another foul play now Weezing Galar is gonna come in we don't have an electric resist anymore so plus one T-Bolt does quite a bit then we're gonna go into Dublade to go for the Shadow Sneak which only does 20% to Reuniclus and uh, Evie is going to pivot into Togekiss to try to get rid of this so Air Slash there Dazzling Gleam is gonna knock out Umbreon you can see our team is starting to get uh, kind of just picked apart unfortunately as Toxic uh, doesn't even affect this Reuniclus because of Overcoat sorry of course of Magic Guard and uh, yeah just a tough spot to be in so uh, Psy Shock is going to knock out the Dublade, and that is pretty much it. So not really much Theo could do. Just a good, you know, good prep from the opponent. They knew that Theo likes fat, and they brought literally Calm Mind, Calm Mind, Nasty Plot, Guts, like a lot of breakers. They knew what they are doing, and they ended up getting a win. So we'll pause it there and get into the next game. 
Okay, and here we have Uber. So we played NU, but uh, Lilo forgot to save the replay, so uh, he won, which is great, but he forgot to save the replay. Anyway, so here we have Genius from Hoenn facing off against uh, Fogbound Lake. So obviously pretty good matchup, uh, Fog being a very solid uh, Ubers player, and you know, Ubers, again, tier not super familiar with, but we do see Darmanitan Galar, which is always a really cool Pokemon to see, um, even if it's against us. So we'll just see how we decide to handle that thing. We do have a Mew. Um, which I'm not sure what that's going to do, so excited to see what that does. Weavile also an interesting pick, and honestly has a decently good matchup here because of its dual stab. So let's get right into it. We're going to see the Kyogre versus Mew lead, as we are going to go for a taunt. So based off of this, it's probably fair to assume that this is just a uh, hyper offense build, right? Focus Sash, Taunt Mew with like Stealth Rock Spike, and then just a bunch of setup mods. So we're going to see a Water Spout right off the bat, which it means that we're going to... Offense, we're facing off against the offensive Kyogre. We're going to go for a spike early as Mew is going to get knocked out. And now we can go into Eternatus. Um, we're going to go for that Meteor Beam on the very first turn. It comes out only to go at 50%. And we're going to be forced to take an Ice Beam, which does do quite a bit of damage. But on the next turn, the opponent really doesn't want uh, to deal with this as we are going to go for a sub. Good play here from the opponent. Um, just checking us as uh, we end up going for a Dynamax Cannon knocking out the Kyogre. And I think that was a good play also from Genius from Hoenn um, just because we can sub to stall out the rain just to make sure that like, Necrozma can't come in because then Flamethrower is going to hit it pretty hard. So I think that was a smart play. Um, now they're going to knock us out with an Earthquake and we are going to go into a Veltal as they are locked in. So they're going to go into Eternatus yet again. They're going to uh, obviously not take any damage because they're heavy duty boots and we're going to double into Necrozma of our own as they end up throwing up a Toxic Spike and we go for a knock, removing their boots. So we are Life Orb as you can see and uh, this is where things start to get a little bit tricky because we're going to struggle to break past this team. Uh, we're going to see Necrozma go for a Sunseal Strike on the switch after the plus one and Power Construct is going to go off and Zygarde is going to be complete form. Sunseal Strike will be able to knock this thing out so maybe there's something we can do with Necrozma but it is going to be a little tough as Darmanitan Galar comes in. We're going to play aggressive, stay in on the U-turn, smart play as we are going to click uh, Sunseal Strike yet again. Uh, doing about 97%. Pretty insane damage. So right now our, our Necrozma is kind of going crazy. Unfortunately, it's just going to be a little bit too slow. And again, our Darm the opponent's Darman tank can come in and click U-turn yet again. And with the T-Spike that they put up, every other Pokemon on our team, or at least Weavile and Xerneas are in trouble. So Necrozma of their own is going to come in. We're going to go into a Veltal to you know remove this thing's item. They are going to go into Darman and Galar as we end up going for a Taunt. Smart play um, from genius and good play from the opponent as well covering that as now we are in a weird spot they are going to go into Eternatus as we end up going for the sucker we're going to go into Zern now as the opponent is going to I believe go for a recover they're going to go for sludge bombs that are well prepared and with the uh, poison the toxic like we really can't take advantage of this we only have one turn and they're just going to sack the uh, they're just going to sack the darm if Veltal can come right back in, but at this point it's looking a little dire as we taunt, we roost, and eventually we're going to get Sludge Bomb Poison, so it doesn't really matter. We are, we're actually avoiding it, which is pretty funny, but there it finally happens, and now Weavile is going to come in, try to Swords Dance up, but it doesn't work, and that is going to be that. So we'll click through this a little bit, and eventually our Pokemon go down, and yeah, that's that. So. Pretty tough game, honestly. Uh, hyper offense just didn't have the greatest matchup here, uh, especially the T spike at the end. That really, really sealed it. It made it really impossible. Endeavor was really cool from the Xerneas, but again, that didn't work out either. Um, T spike was just really hard to handle. And that was a good play from the opponent, bringing that and setting it up there just to ensure that our hyper offense ran out of steam. So, uh, well played to both ends. We'll pause it and get into the next game. Okay, and here we have our LC game. We have Mendes facing off against Door Money. Um, Right off the bat, pretty tough matchup. Uh, Carvana into Morlil is pretty bad. Um, Fire, I mean, it, it's pretty tough, right? Carvana into Morlil is just tough in general. Um, also, Trap Inch is nice, but um, it's going to be kind of hard pressed because maybe we can trap Ponyta and we kind of have to save it for that, and that means we can't really use it for Pawnyard, etc. So you kind of pick one or the other, right? That's one thing to take into account. Um, 
other than that though i mean like it looks decent overall not two versus not two. i mean like it's just kind of standard stuff but the pony is definitely gonna be hard to handle um we kind of have to save trap inch for that and then, um by saving trap inch for that then we kind of get opened up more to stuff like poniard etc so um and then of course more is just gonna be a very big roadblock for carvana so i think we kind of get into the game here so we're gonna see the carve lead early on versus the foo um Verse, and then Morlo comes in on this turn. So good double here from Mendes. I would have maybe even considered leading off with Fu uh, just to get a knockoff early to really punish this Morlo a little bit more. Um, either way, this is a pretty solid double as now the opponent's going to go into Pawn here and we end up going for Sludge Bomb. This is where I would have gone for uh, Fire Blast um, because, okay, I feel like Door Money's play here was like pretty aggressive. Because Fire Blast is so obvious, but I guess like the idea is like, oh, you can go into Ponyta um, on Fire Blast or whatever. And even if it's neutralizing gas away the Flash Fire, you're still only doing like, a little bit of damage. But, you know, bringing Ponyta in early is kind of a decent position for us to be in. Um, so I would have been okay with that, I feel like. Because you can remove it early and then kind of play a little bit more aggressive with stuff like Fu, etc. Um, either way, the opponent is able to get this turn right. And this puts us in a weird spot early on as we are forced to go into Mianfu and lose our Violet or give up rocks. So... Morlo is going to come out now, as we do end up going for HJK, again, another position where I think we could have just knocked. No way the opponent was going to give up their Pawnier that easily, so again, removing the Violet on Morlo would have been huge. Maybe could have set up for a Carvana to win in the late game with like Psychic Fangs, etc. So. Pony is going to come in now as we double into Natu, and with Rocks up, things are starting to look a lot tougher. Ponyta just kind of has a field day against us as we end up going for that U-turn. We're going to be able to go into Trap Inch, which unfortunately gets crit there. and. Yeah, I mean, at that point, what can you do? If you're Mendes, there's literally just nothing you can do. So, yes, we got pretty lucky in, you know, the first couple of games, as you guys saw. Um, but, you know, the luck kind of got back to us in these in this sequence as well. So this Ponyta kind of ends up just kind of doing a number on our team. We're going to go for Protect here again. This Morlo still has its Violet, so we're forced to sack Natu. Uh, the opponent is going to go into Natu of their own. Pretty, pretty hard, pretty ballsy play there, but at this point, it's fair for them to do this because um, they are Life Orb, Natu, so good call on their end. Um, and even if they just, even if we knock them out with, you know, knock off, they could probably just go into their, what I'm assuming is like a Violet Diglett to just trap and, uh, knock off Pawn, so. Carve is gonna come in, but at this point, it's pretty much over. There's nothing really for, um, Mindy's to do as more looking just synthesis and we just forfeit. So, tough game overall. I mean, the crit on the Trap Inch really sealed it, because then, Pony, I mean, at that point, Ponyta can't really do much, and they already had a pretty decent matchup with Morlo, just in, in particular, um, so that just made it a lot tougher. So, it is what it is. Um, Indies takes a tough loss, but doesn't really uh, mean anything, and we can move on to the next game. Okay, and here we have uh, Monotype. I don't think I mentioned that at the beginning, so we also obviously have Monotype. So we have Mateus facing off against Trichotomy. Uh, Mateus um, using a Mono Dragon team versus a Mono Steel team. So obviously not the position we wanted to find ourselves in, but it doesn't mean we don't have outs, right? Stuff like Kyurem can be very, very annoying for these type of teams. Um, Dragapult probably has a fire type coverage move, etc, etc. You get the idea. Hydreigon can also be a big threat. So maybe Matt can break through this team and with a little bit of luck, you know, hint, hint, um, this could be a win for us. So let's get right into the game. So we're going to see the Pult lead versus the Celesteel lead. We're going to switch out of there early, going into Chomp, as they end up going to Heatran. Obviously a good position for us to be in, as we can, you know, go for our Earthquake or Rocks. We end up going for Earthquake as Corv comes in and getting our Rocks on this turn, as they reveal to be Agility. So I think it's the Power Trip Bulk Up set, if I had to guess, as they end up going for that Bulk Up, which does think, which is a little spooky. Um, but the Power Trip, unfortunately, is only going to do 17% for them, and our Flamethrower is going to do 50%, plus the Burn, which really seals the deal there. They are going to get that Weakness Policy, but because of the Burn, they obviously... Um, get weakened significantly which puts us in a really really good position so we'll definitely take that they end up going for a power trip now which only does 24 percent compared to the 50 it would have done as uh with dark pulse is going to bring them quite low they're going to go for another power trip which takes us down to about 46 we're going to go for flamethrower knocking them out and that is that so worked out pretty well uh we got rid of one threat but it doesn't mean we're out of the woods yet so mold breaker x is going to come in obviously and we're going to go into chomp you know trying to maybe get a spin off or just go for earthquake Chomp is going to come in to scare this thing out with another, uh, with its own Earthquake, as we're going to double into Dragonite. Good play there from Matt. Um, and now we're going to pivot into Dragology as the opponent goes for that Meteor Beam. So, good scouting there from our, our end, covering for stuff like that. They end up going for the Autotomize, and Dragology is going to go for that slow, 
nice flip turn into our own Pult, which should be able to take any one hit. We end up <laughs> dodging an Air Slash, which is pretty hilarious, because now we can go for Dragon Dance, Phantom Force, the opponent's going to Air Slash themselves uh, as they end up going into Ferrothorn here. Phantom Force is going to do quite a bit, 58%. Uh, we end up taking Life Orb plus uh, Iron Barb's damage as they end up going into Heatran here, um, predicting a Fire Blast. Really good positioning from them, honestly, like really good scouting. As they saw the Life Orb Dragon Dance, they expected Fire Blast. That was really, really smart of them. As now we're going to go for another Phantom Force. They're going to go for Magma Storm. The plus one Phantom Force ends up doing about 80%, which is pretty awesome. And they're going to go for Magma Storm, which does do a lot in return. Um, brings us down to 6%, but... With Protect, we're going to get knocked out, and that is going to be that. We're going to go into Dragonite now to follow up to try to make something happen. We're going to go for a Dragon Dance, which is pretty good, pretty threatening. Earthquake, unfortunately, will fail to knock this thing out, but we do end up dodging a Toxic. So things are just really going in our favor here. Like, we're dodging Air Slash, dodging Toxic, getting Burns, whatever we really want. Um, so, yeah, we're going to go for another Dragon Dance here, as the opponent is going to go for the Air Slash, breaking our multi-scale. But we can go for Dragon Claw now and try to break past their team. So we're going to dodge another Air Slash. It's just kind of funny at this point. And Trichotomy decides to forfeit. So, hey, it, it's tough. I mean, like... It's been a hacksy series. I'm not denying that. Obviously, I think we've been a little bit more lucky, but you know, sometimes you just have to take what you can get. So we'll pause it there, get into the next game. Okay, and here we have the next game. We have Ninja facing off against Shadow Monster in doubles. So not much of a doubles person, so I'm just going to kind of... I'm going to commentate as I see it, basically. Um... Let's get right into it. So, Serena versus Whimsica, uh, Whimsica. Double Grass Lead. Serena does have Queenly Majesty, meaning that it blocks all priority for all Mons, or I think all opponent opposing Mons. So that's pretty cool. And obviously, Whimsica has Prankster. We're gonna see Mew and Faramosa from Ninja's End. So, Tailwind right off the bat, as we end up getting a nice stab U-turn on the Serena early on, which does some really big damage. We do end up revealing that Life Orb as a Moongus is going to come in and the opponent's going to go for a U-turn of their own which gets a crit on Mew and brings them very low as well so not ideal we're forced to eat our Citrus Berry, Citrus Berry there and end up being pretty low as we go for Tailwind of our own so both Tailwinds go out so I'm basically meaning that we're at neutral essentially we're going to see Tapu Fini come in um, and a Moongus is going to switch out into Zydog as uh, Heatran is just going to go for that Heat Wave doing some really really big damage to our team especially with the Prankster fake tears, lowing Spadef harshly on Zygarde, doubling the damage, and Life Orb gets revealed. So pretty cool. Like I really like the sequence here from Shadow Monster as we're going to go for Protect here. Moonblast is going to blink into that as Flash Cannon is going to do 48%, does get another Spadef drop, and Muddy Water is going to miss, which is really annoying. So that would have been good damage to have on Heatran, especially offensive, would have taken quite a bit of damage. But hey, not much you can do about that as Tapu Fini is going to protect. Moonblast is going to hit Mew and Flash Cannon is going to blink into the protect. So that worked out well. Ninja is able to kind of come out of that okay. He's going to go for Fake out here, blocking the Whimsicott from doing anything as Heat Wave is going to knock out Mew. And Tapu Fini is going to go for a Muddy Water again, lowering the Whimsicott's accuracy and finally getting some good damage on Heatran. This thing would have been dead, which would have been nice. As you can see, it's a huge threat to our team. Absolutely massive threat. Uh, everything is weak to Fire-type moves, so that was pretty tough. Tailwind's going to come out here, and it means another Heat Wave is going to go. Fini ends up dodging, which is pretty clutch, as Amoongus eats it barely. And we're going to dodge another... Uh, the opponent's going to dodge another Muddy Water. So really just... Ha and actually going to dodge both of them. So really just a Haxi game. Uh oh a Haxi series, really, all together. Um, Heatran, this thing is such a big threat. Um, but we're just unable to kill it at this point. Sludge Bomb is going to blink into that, as Heat Wave is going to knock out the Amoongus. Unfortunately, we do not dodge there. As they are on their last Life Orb hit, Metagross is going to come in. We're going to double into Zydog to maybe bait out another, you know, Heat Wave or whatever. Tapu Fini is just going to drop to the Sludge Bomb. And the opponent is going to go for Heat Wave, which is going to knock them out. But we do end up getting burned. So it's like, what can you really do at this point if you're Ninja? You're just in a tough spot altogether. Uh, Urshifu is going to come in. But at this point, it's kind of over just because, like, what legitimately, what can you do? Uh, Sludge Bomb is going to knock out Zydog. The Nag Nagandel is at plus two, sp uh, plus two speed. So Surging Strikes is going to do some pretty big damage to Metagross, as you can see here, as the Urshifu ends up being Life uh, life Orb as well. Pheromos is going to come out now, trying to protect, but it doesn't really matter because this plus two speed Nagadel outspeeds it. Surging Strike is going to knock out Metagross, and Pheromos is going to go down just because it has such pitiful defenses. So, really tough game there. I don't really know what went wrong. I just think that this Heatran just had such good... Uh, 
options versus us, especially that fake tears combo. Like that was really deadly. Um, also, just like the fact that like we missed a couple muddy waters versus this thing. Like so, we're forced to take a lot more damage. It was just a tough matchup. I don't think there's really much else to say. Good prep from the opponent, I guess. And yeah, just tough that it had to end like that. So we'll pause it and uh, get into the next game. All right, we have uh, the next game. We have Sagiri versus uh, facing off against. Kyo, 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 not sure how to pronounce it. Either way, we're playing SMOU again. Pretty cool tier, a lot of really cool Pokemon. You see Magirna, Kartana, Mega Lopunny, which is really, really sick. The opponent's obviously using a Mega Metacham team, which is going to be very hard to handle. Even with Landorus uh, intimidating it, it can always, you know, snipe it with an, with an Ice Punch or something, so. We definitely be careful versus that. Uh, Greninja is obviously a big threat. But we do have like probably Assault Vest Magirna to help handle that, uh, so we should be okay. So let's get right into the game here. Um, uh, yeah, so let's get right into the game. Not really much else to say. Um, I think Mega Lapunny of our own might be a big threat, especially if we're able to kind of wear down the uh, Lando over time. But we'll have to get right into it. So Kartana lead from our end versus Amoongus. Uh, obviously not a good lead for us. We're going to go into Cosmic Coco. Hidden Power is still in this generation, so we have to be careful of that. Good play here from Sagari, using the Electric Train to block the Spore. Going to go for a U-turn here to bring the Magirna in now, safely. Double Spore <laughs> really doesn't do much again because of um, Electric Train. You'd have to like go into Lando, I think, so that way it's not protected by Train, but you know. I digress. Anyways, Magirna is able to come in and go for an Ice Beam here. Just going to chip away a little bit at Rotom. As they end up going for a Wisp, probably like a Figgy Berry or one of those. As we're going to go for another Ice Beam, predicting a switch. Um, Rotom is now going to Volt Switch out of there. And as you can see, we take absolutely nothing because we are indeed that uh, Assault Vest Magirna. So, Volt Switch there is going to bring in the Lando of our own. We're going to go for Stealth Rocks here as the opponent just goes for Spore, plays it safe. Good play on their end, but Rocks up are going to be very valuable as well to help kind of help you know chip away at Celesteela, at Rotom, at Greninja, etc, etc. So uh, We're gonna see the Metacham come in finally on this turn um, as we end up burning that one turn of sleep. We have to switch out of there, we have to be very very wary, excuse me, of Ice Punch as Mega Metacham is gonna reveal that and does 56% to Coco which is pretty crazy. So Coco obviously scares this thing out with you know something like Dazzling Gleam so we're gonna U-turn into uh, Anamungus into our Mega Lopunny Takes us an opportunity to, excuse me, Mega Evolve. As Lapunny is going to Mega Evolve and go for that return. Only doing 36% as Lander is Lando is quite bulky, but we are going to go for a second return as the opponent has revealed the Z Super Scan of Psy Strike, knocking us out. So I think what Sagari was expecting is just rocks in this turn. The opponent plays it safe, plays it for, goes straight forward, knocks us out right then and there, and we lose one of our biggest threats uh, on this turn. So definitely a tough spot to be in, as Cortana is going to be able to come in and knock this thing off and knock it out. But doesn't mean we've, uh, we're really in that great of a spot because Greninja is going to come in again. Our Magirna is our dedicated switch, but with that burn from earlier, uh, we aren't. You know, we're on a timer. You know, we're obviously still healthy and we're like can come in probably two to three more times, but we have to be very careful. So we're going to see you go for a Vol switch here. As Lando is going to come in, try to burn a couple of turns. As Mega Manicham is going to come right back in, and we end up, you know, getting that second turn of sleep, meaning that we're in a really tough spot. So, Ice Punch here is going to do 45%. Obviously, we outspeed them, so we're going to switch out. They're going to go into Celesteela as we end up going for a Smart Strike, doing about 25%. So. Rotom's going to come in now as the opponent's going to double back in a Mega Metacham. Good play from the opponent, really utilizing their advantage. I really like the way that they're playing, um, playing aggressive as they're going to HJK into, uh, at minus one into Lando and do 30%. So just let that sink in for a second. <laughs> Rotom's going to come in on a Ice Punch and then gets frozen. Not really much you can do there as they end up getting a crit on the next turn knocking us. I think we lived that because of the minus one also. So obviously a really tough spot to be in. Nothing you can really do if you're Sagri there. Knockoff here is going to fail to knock this thing out. They end up playing aggressive yet again, staying in, anticipating the knock and knocking us out. And that is going to be a really tough spot to be in. Ice Punch here only does 37%. We're going to go for a U-turn knocking out the Mega Metacham and bringing in our Magina. But at this point, it's looking really, really tough because Lando doesn't have a ton. Is Lando still asleep, first of all, and doesn't have like a ton of offensive presence. Coco has offensive presence, but has going to really struggle versus the Amoongus. And Magirna, obviously, as you can see, is on a timer. Uh, as Vol Switch is not doing much. Lando's going to come right back in. The Hidden Power Fire, most likely. Um, only doing 14% uh, here. As Celesteel is going to come right in. And Lando is going to go for that slow U-turn. Bring in the Coco back in. And we're going to see a little bit of a rinse and repeat here. We're going to see a Roost into U-turn. Energy Ball from the Amoongus on that turn. Celesteel comes in. 
Coco is going to get seeded. Now this thing is slowly but surely getting worn down as we end up going for U-turn, blah, 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 blah. More of the same. But it's kind of just a slow death for Sagri here because he can't really break past the steam no matter how hard he tries. And while he's able to find himself in a position where Rotom is low and he can Vol switch on it, you can see Magirin has taken so much damage to the point that it's almost dead. And Landorus has as well. Coco is able to come in and go for that wild charge, knocking this thing out, which is great. But the problem is that Amoongus is still healthy. And uh, yeah, so. You turn here. Celesteel is going to come right back in. Again, Sagri has to kind of make every single play count here. He's able to I pop of this thing back up to 64%, but he has to really make every single turn count. So he's going to go for U turn here. Amoongus is going to come. We're going to go for another U turn. Uh, Celesteel comes in. Uh, again, another U turn. So he's playing aggressive. I really like the way he's playing. But as you can see, Amoongus is just not taking enough damage. Even with the trip, he's able to stay in here on the U turn and go back into Coco, which ends up eating an energy ball, which takes quite a bit. Greninja's gonna come in on a Z move here. Z Gigavolt have a good scout from Kyo or Kyo uh, as that thing goes down. And now we're really running out of firepower. Coco really can't do much. U turn is just gonna chip away at this thing as we end up going for a Volt Switch. Magirna, Amoongus, blah, 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 blah. And yeah, at the end of the day, we get toxic and there's just nothing we can do. We just can't break past this Amoongus no matter how hard we try. Um, and yeah, that is going to be that. So GG, tough game for sure. Definitely a tough game, but that's just the way Pokemon is sometimes. So we'll pause it there and get into the next game. Final game. Okay, and here we have Oras, OU. We have Spitfire, Arcanine facing off against uh, Manit. Anyway, so Oras OU, obviously we see like a uh, bird spam type of build with, you know, Magnezone plus Pinsir uh, to really help take advantage of like trapping stuff like Skarm, etc, etc. Our team, uh, and we see a lot of other like really heavy hitters, right? We see Azumarill, huge heavy hitter, Kiram Black, huge heavy hitter, Manaphy, huge heavy hitter. So um, Spitfire really has his work cut out for him, but Thunderous is going to be very, very, very good against this team. Uh, with Hidden Power Ice plus Thunderbolt coverage, it is going to be very hard to handle. And we'll see exactly how he decides to manage uh, this game. So, Kiram's going to be the lead of choice for Thunderous. Again, Thunderous good lead against most things. So, obviously, find to just lead off with this. Go for a Volt Switch early as we can go into Slowbro. And the opponent's going to go for a Dragon Claw, which is most certainly banded. That's just way too much for it not to be banded. We're going to see a double and a Pinsir. Uh, good play here from the opponent uh, covering that. Be able to, you know, force a Mega Evolution and also, you know, maybe get an Earthquake off as they end up going for a turn here. Spitfire ends up being very, very fearless and uh, stays in going for the Plume. I like that play. I feel like it's very easy. Earthquake was very easy to click, um, but because it's so easy to click, it's just better to click return there. And Plume is going to get some huge damage off on Pinsir, as now he can go into Thunderous, as it covers pretty much both options. Even in return, doesn't really appreciate, but with lefties, he's in an okay spot, as Landorus is going to come in. And this is a very interesting turn from the opponent, because Hidden Power Ice is so free here. It kills Pinsir, and just in case they try to get cheeky and go pin uh, Lando, is going to go for that, to the point that they really shouldn't even make this play. Um, but we end up going for Hidden Power Ice, knocking them out from full, and putting ourselves in a really good spot. I think maybe they were expecting us to like Volt Switch expecting Kiram, which is fair, not wanting to give that a free turn, but it was just too free not to go for it, and the risk was the reward was hella worth it. So that worked out really well. Obviously, Kiram comes in, this thing's a problem, no denying that, as we're gonna Volt Switch and go into Exca, hoping that we click the right move. Fortunately, we do, as they end up going for an Iron Head, and that's gonna enable us to um, go for our own Iron Head. So. They're going to switch into Pinsir here on this turn as we end up going for another Iron Head. Good prediction here from Spitfire, anticipating the double into Pinsir or something and catching that. That worked out excellently. Manaphy is going to come in now. We don't really have much to worry about because all we need to do is just Earthquake this thing to make sure it's in range of Thunderbolt from a Thunderous. So we're going to go into Tyranitar now. Don't really have a great use for this thing as Surf at plus three will <laughs> knock us out. Um, but that's fine because again, we can just go into Thunderous. Thunderous is going to do what it does best, which is um, Volt Switch, getting some decent damage on his own, enabling us to go back into Tran. T-Bolt, even with a crit, that was absolutely nothing. We're going to get our rocks up. T-Bolt, again, 27% only. Lava Plume is going to be able to knock out the zone. They go into Azumarill, and this is where Spitfire is a genius. He kept he kept this out to roar. The, it, just, it was just incredible, because he decided to go um, 
with Tran over something like Excadrill, like all the way back here, right? With the sand up and everything, oh, why don't you just go Excadrill? Because he can do play a sequence where he knows the opponent's going to go into Azumarill and try to go for it, and he can just go for the roar. Really, really heads up play, really thinking ahead, right? You know, Excadrill versus Magnezone, obviously, could have been a great spot to be in. But decides to think a little bit further ahead, decides to get up his rocks to help punish the Kiram, and also bait out the Azumarill Belly Drum. I just really like that play. I think it was just so smart and just thinking super far ahead. So, Roar's that thing. It's gonna Bandit Outrage will be able to knock out Huge Tran just because of the insane uh, attack on this thing. But it doesn't really matter as Clef can just go come in now and start Calm Minding. And that is gonna be that. So, Moonblast is gonna knock them out. They're gonna go for Bandit Iron Head, doesn't do enough. Manaphy is going to come in. Manaphy is going to uh, go for an Ice Beam as Slowbro Mega evolves. Doesn't do enough. Psychic is going to fail to knock them out, but that's fine as we're able to knock them out with the second Psychic. And that is going to be that. So, um, Slowbro and Spitfire end up taking the win there. Thunderous was a huge, huge threat. Um, but yeah, that was pretty awesome. So we end up going seven and five on the week again. Lilo, we weren't able to get his replay, but it's all good. Um, but yeah, so we go seven and five on the week, which is awesome. We end up picking up a second win, two and zero. Oh, um, and obviously, I'm gonna do my best to record the rest of the series. So whenever I get the chance. So hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. That would mean a lot to me. And I will see you guys in the next game, or sorry, next video. Take care and goodbye.